turn it off. Now to make our barriers, we're going to go back into here, backdrop, and we're going to duplicate it, and I'll show you why. The first one here, I'm just going to go and make a series of, of barriers directly on the piece. And let's make them this kind of dark red. Click it, got it set to full. And you can see when I initially click it, I can, I can do some manipulation of things. But once I go on to the next piece, that gets locked down. So now that one is locked. I'm going to go do another one here. Make that a little different. And maybe a very long, thin one here. And another smaller one here. And so like I say, once they're here, I can't move them around. It is what it is. So my, my uh, character is going to move through them. Show our piece here. And so we're going to move through here. And here, that's going to be a little tight. I might have to go back and uh, shrink this a little more. Uh, so this is one where you draw them directly. The other method is you go and I'm going to use this one. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to make them out of sprites. It's a little bit more work, but you'll see why it's going to be, work better in the long run. So there's going to be a sprite. I lose my back right now, but you'll see it show up here. So here, now let's make these blue so we can tell them apart. And I can have them uh, outlined or solid. I can have them solid. Now, it doesn't matter where I put them here. I can put them anywhere because they're going to be sprites. I'm going to say OK. And now I can move them here anywhere I want. I can also go back in at any time, you'll see, and change them. So I'm going to now make Sprite 2, and go in and make this one a shorter one. Put this down here, make another Sprite, and Put that one where I want. So actually, let me change these around. See, already you can see the advantage. I can change these things however I want. And so if I say, well, that's a little too big, or let's say this one, I can go back into Sprite 1, you can see here and um, select it and do some changing on it. I can tilt it or anything if I wanted to. I can also enlarge it a little bit. So you can see I have um, a little bit more uh, control on it and you'll see there's another control even later I can use. So again, it's a little more work, but you get a benefit from them. So now, uh, again, let's go back to my player, and I can check, and I can see. And like I say, another thing, if I wanted to, I can go into selecting, like say, Sprite 4, you can see here. Uh, I can go right into the scripts, and I can also change it there. We're into looks, and I can say... Uh, make this 80%. And now you'll see it'll get a little smaller. Or let's, let's make it 90% and a little bigger. So I can do a lot with that. 
Also, the movement, um, these are locked in. They, they are where they are, the red ones. Uh, I can't move them around anymore. The blue ones, uh, I can. So again, these are uh, a motion, and I can also set up where I want them. So when I go into them, into the scripts here, in under motion, usually when you go to motion, it'll tell you where something is uh, in space. And you can see right here, as I'm pointing to with this, you can see that's the, that's the number where it is, and it matches this. So I can say, when everything starts, when the, when the program starts, go to here, go to this space. So when it starts, motion-wise, like I say, normally when you go into that from outside the program, it will have it set to wherever this is. And, okay, this one. And remember this one I changed the size on, so I'm going to have that there. And so even let's say we shuffle these around, because these could move later for some reason. If I hit the, uh, the green um, flag up here, everything will snap back into place. And same thing for my character here when I start up. I will show the character, I will set the character to 30%, and I will move the character to this place. So even as after everything has moved all around, literally everything will snap back to its initial position.